Hey, go on. It's good to see you all here today. Is it time to start? Pretty much. Um, yeah, how are you today? Pretty good? Oh, very quiet again. Like I'm, I'm, your, your orderliness is improved markedly. I'm just amazed. I think it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> Well, it's a demonstration of love, isn't it? Like, yeah, to be, to be able to start on time and so forth. Yeah. Okay, well, today, uh, the topic today is going to be about uh, the God's Way of Love organisation and changes that um, I'm making. And I say I'm making because I was meant to have done them yesterday, but due to a lot of different things that happened yesterday, they didn't get done. Um, but there's changes that I'm making to the constitution of the organisation that I wanted to explain to you because it, affects, uh, it will affect many of you and your choices and decisions you make in terms of what you want to do with the organisation if you want to be involved with the organisation itself. And um, the main reason why I wanted to explain them to you is so that it, g it gives you a chance to understand how everything has been organised and how everything works and will also give you a chance to decide whether you want to be involved with the organisation or not. Um, remember that the primary purposes of the God's Way of Love organisation have not changed. So our primary purpose is to demonstrate God's Way of Love in the real world practical environments and, uh, and to enable people and give people as much as we can possibly give to people to enable them to engage uh, real-world practical situations where they can demonstrate love more fully. So uh, if we just write the topic of it up. Organisation. And this is about changes to the constitution. Boring topic, eh? Changes to the Australian Constitution. The <laughs> Constitution. Yep. Okay. Um, now, I want to give you a little bit of history first um, because it's been now nine months in the approval process of trying to get certain approvals with the government. And in the process, uh, I'd like to describe to you what's actually happened. Nine months ago, myself and Mary's idea was more to what we wanted really the God's Way of Love organisation ideally to be known as a non-profit organisation. And the main reason why we wanted that is because our goals and the constitution itself actually demonstrates that it is a non-profit operating organisation. That will remain the case. So in other words, it's always going to have a non-profit focus. However, what we wanted to do was we wanted to apply to the government, to the Australian Taxation Office, and actually get them to approve of it as a non-profit organisation. Now, what happened was that uh, we put that approval process in play at the beginning of this year, so, so nine months ago or ten months ago now. And um, what happened was that uh, initially there was, a, there was a lady looking after that process and we had a number of conversations and then somehow it all got lost in the pile and I've been phoning her and con trying to contact her and getting no reply or anything like that. And then over, so over a period of six months we had no reply whatsoever from the taxation department. Now during those six months the media stuff started. So, as you know, most of the media stuff at this point has been quite <laughs> negative and misrepresentative. And when I say has been quiet, I don't think I've actually found anything that honest <laughs> with it. Oh, no, maybe there's been one or two who have been quite honest with their dealings with this, but uh, the majority have been quite dishonest and, uh, and presented totally unfactual and, well, lies, basically, to, to the public. Um, knowing full well that I probably wouldn't do anything about that which is exactly how I feel. Um, so um, so what, what's happened during that time is um, the, we didn't receive any response from the taxation department. And so about a few months ago, a couple of months ago now, I, I managed to find somebody in the taxation department 
who wanted to actually deal with the issue <laughs> and, uh, and they then started to handle the issue straight away. Um, now what happened was though that they, they, they were happy with the constitution with the exception of its membership and they didn't like the idea of having founding members and associate members and general membership and having the, the founding members able to control the direction of the organisation. What they wanted was the general membership to be open to the public and therefore, and then the public controls what happened to the organisation. Now, as I explained to them, um, that would automatically mean that the person in the lowest condition of love on the public who then became a member of the organisation would then have a large degree of say about what happened to the organisation. And I explained to them that we couldn't really have that happen. The reason why we're creating the organisation is we want it to be demonstrating God's way of love and not mankind's way of love, which is, we feel, quite distorted and in its best situation and in its worst situation, not love at all. And in fact, quite a lot of fear-based uh, feelings, mostly associated with what people call love. And so um, in this discussion, it became clear that they were not going to approve the organisation as a non-profit organisation unless we removed those clauses in the constitution that referred to um, people in a better condition of love having a veto of a vote of the general membership. So in other words, they wanted the general membership's vote to be, to be binding and not there to be people who were in and accepted what, what the organisation felt was in a better condition of love who could then veto the vote of the general membership to stop the general membership from taking unloving actions. Does that make sense? So they wanted me to change it so that the, the founding membership, uh, which is myself and Mary at this point in time, and it will only ever be uh, myself and Mary because by definition we are the founders of the organisation, and the associate membership, which under the definition of the constitution is any person who becomes at one with God while they are on earth can become an associate member. And the founding members and the associate members are able to change the constitution of the organisation. Now, if we allowed the general membership to change the constitution of the organisation, that would mean that if people who were not in a good condition of love took over the, the majority, became the majority of members, then the organisation would no longer reflect what myself and Mary had created, but now would go down in a different path depending on what general membership wanted it to do. Now obviously it would still have to do it in accordance with the laws of the land, but our concern is that many of the laws of the land are also unloving, and, and that's uh, not necessarily a good idea either. While we believe in following all the laws of the land, we don't feel that it's right to have the entire membership following certain, uh, deciding to change the constitution to suit the laws of the land that are unloving towards others. So, um, so our concern then became, well, if we allow, if we do what the taxation office says just to get a non-profit status for the organisation, then we're severely diluting the actual purpose of the organisation. And, uh, and myself and Mary both felt that we couldn't do that. So, so what, we've, what we've done instead is decided to keep it as a normal organisation. And when I say a normal organisation, that means under the terms of a normal organisation in the Australian law, um, the organisation could make a profit. However, with this particular organisation, the constitution still states that it can't make one. Does that make sense? And of course, the directors are bound by the constitution. So, so it becomes a non-profit organisation still, because it's still got that binding part in the constitution, but, the, but it has to pay taxation. That's basically the main difference. So the organisation itself has to pay taxation on any donation. 
Now, while paying taxation on general donations is quite simple, because if we're running the organisation as myself and Mary wish to run it, what happens is somebody might give us, say, a donation in the organisation of $1,000, and then we'll go and buy $1,000 worth of trees for that, right? And then we'll, we'll give those trees to somebody who wants to plant them. Does that make sense? So in other words, we're now giving away the $1,000, so we've got a gift going out of the same amount of money coming in. From an, from an accounting perspective, we have to pay GST on the $1,000 coming in, so we have to put aside $100 to pay for GST, but because we're giving the gift out of the same amount, we can then claim $100 GST return. Does that make sense to everyone? So at the end of the day, it really makes no difference in the sense that we're still able to use the $1,000 of that donation to do $1,000 worth of things. Except for the accounting cost, but at the moment I'm doing the accounting, so <laughs> there's no cost associated with that. Now, of course, we have an accounting cost at the end of the year, but that, that's a, myself and Mary have been paying those, those payments ourselves. Now, the only time the organisation then is affected by the fact that it doesn't have a taxation, uh, a, a tax-free status, is when it has a profit. So in other words, if we get $1,000 in and we only spend 500 then obviously we've now got a $500 profit in the organisation and then we would have to pay tax on that. Now, the current corporate rate's around 30% or so, so we'd pay 30% of $500 in taxation. Does that make sense? That's, that's how it works. Now, myself and Mary are very happy to pay taxation. We pay taxation in our day-to-day -day life. All of your donations, in fact, to us personally, we pay taxation on. So it, it's treated by the taxation department as income, and, uh, and then we pay taxation on that income just like you would pay taxation on yours. So we're perfectly okay with doing that. And we feel that the God's Way of Love organisation wouldn't hold on to money with the exception if it wanted to build a big project that we were saving for. So if, a, if there was a big project, let's say a project on a property where we wanted to build a nursery, but before we could start we needed $50,000, then obviously we'd store the money until we got enough money to do the project, if that makes sense. Now, from a taxation perspective then, all we're worried, all we, all we need to be concerned about is actually just keeping r the records. Now, what we've decided to do with the records is we want to make the records totally open. So what we want to do is have all of the income and all of the expense records of the God's Way of Love organisation available to all its members. Does that make sense? So that way every single person knows and, and available to the public as well. So that way every single person knows what's happened with different funds. Now in the organisation there are protections against the misuse of funds anyway because no director is allowed to receive any funds, no member is allowed to receive any funds and so forth. Um, so that will obviously have an effect so, and we'll talk about the effects of this if, you, if people become members and then we start giving funds to work on a property that they might be a part ownership on then obviously there's going to be some issues there and we need to talk about that. But what we want to say firstly is that the first change that it, how it affects you is that we will have to pay taxation. And as a result of that, and perhaps the biggest result of that, is when the people have been considering donating land to the organisation. Now how that works is this. Let's say we have the God's Way of Love organisation and somebody, an owner of a specific point of position, part of land, wanted to donate that land to the God's Way of Love organisation. That is an asset, so from a, the assets perspective, the God's Way of Love organisation hasn't earned any income. However, the owner has obviously earned income to buy the land. And so that means if the land is worth, even though they might be donating it, the land has to be valued 
according to the tax department. So if the land was valued at, lay, say, $500,000, then the owner would have to actually pay um, taxation on the profit they've learnt between that valuation and whatever they had bought the property for. So let's say they'd bought the property for $400,000. They would, they would have to pay that, that 100000 of it would be deemed as a profit on the land, or capital gains is the more correct term, and, and they'd have to pay taxation, capital gains tax, on that. The, 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 the owner would have to. Then the God's Way of Love organisation would be deemed to have received a $500,000 parcel of land. And there is stamp duty to be paid on that land. Now, at the moment, I think here in, a, in Queensland, it's around um, three, 4% or something like that. So, so they would have to pay, we would have to pay $20,000 to receive the land. Now, there's no money in God's way of love to pay any of those kind of fees. Does that make sense? And, we, and so, so we feel it's totally... Um, there's no benefit whatsoever for the God's Way of Love organisation to receive land. Does that make sense? So God's Way of Love organisation will not own land with the exception of two possible scenarios. One possible scenario where we might finish up owning land is because the land has been, instead of donated, it's been bequeathed as a part of a will. How do you spell bequeath? Yep, as a part of a will. So in other words, let's say somebody had been working with us for years and they passed and they, they decided that they wanted to have that land come to God's Way of Love organisation to be used for whatever purpose we want to use it for. Then we would accept that particular land because there are no fees associated with accepting such bequeathments. Does that make sense? So we would accept that. The only other time is if somebody associated with God's way of love uh, could pay the stamp duty on the land as, as well as their own taxation problems with regard to the land. But myself and Mary feel very strongly we do not want the God's way of love organisation to be involved in the management of properties. Do, do you understand? We feel the God's way of love organisation is there to demonstrate the process of giving to the world. That's one of its primary purposes. And, and as such, we don't see any point in owning land in that organisation at all. So while we may, under, under certain circumstances, receive land, the directors have to take into account whether the God's Way of Love organisation has the capacity to pay for the expenses of that land. And, and manage the land, you see. And if we've got a very low bank account because we're spending all of our money as we receive it, then obviously we may not have that funds available and so we might not be able to receive the land for that reason. And we feel we've come up with a much better idea anyway. And this is something that I'd like to present to you. Actually, I'll leave that in place. That's our... It's our organisation. So what we're saying is that we prefer to not receive land and not receive property that we have to manage in the God's Way of Love organisation. We realise that there may be certain circumstances and events that occur in the future where somebody wishes to do that and there might be some impelling case in individual case as to why it might be accepted. But we feel quite strongly that we don't want God's Way of Love organisation to be involved in the management of things like land, property, businesses and all those kind of things. When we say involved, I mean directly involved. So in other words, we don't want to create a business under the God's Way of Love organisation for doing a certain thing, for, for instance, providing food or something like that. We don't want to accept as a donation a business that does such a thing. 
right? Because we, we feel there are other ways to handle such things. The God's Way of Love organization, we want to be more to be sort of an advisory, have an advisory role and a, a gift giving role of, of their volunteers. Volunteer. Volunteer. In other words, we want the God's way of love to be more like a teams of volunteers that give the gift of their time and their advice to other organisations and individuals. Rather than the God's way of love organisation itself becoming this great big thing that owns all this property. You know, we don't want it to become like the Catholic Church, in other words, like owning all this property, owning all these, you know, all these things that have been donated to it. That's not what we wish to do. What we wish to do is to use the funds in all these different areas. So any funds that are donated, we want to use in different areas in order to promote God's way of love on the earth. That's, that's the idea. So we don't see God's way of love as being in an ownership role of any property or business or institution. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. And Feel free to ask questions if you've got any. What we see is the God's Way of Love organisation being involved in giving the gift of our time and our knowledge that we discover through processes that we've got in place to the world without then needing to be any return back to us. Does that make sense? So in other words, we're in the process of giving the gift. Now, that then raises a number of questions. If we want to set up a learning centre, which we certainly do wish to do around the earth, and the constitution has the capacity to set up learning centres, then how do we do so when we don't own any land? How do we do so when we don't own the property that the learning centre will be on? And what we've done is we've come up with um, this, what we feel is a great, a great alternative. In fact, we've we wondered why we hadn't thought of this alternative as, original, as the original alternative. Um, it was so good, uh, we feel. But I would like to explain to you firstly what we are going to offer to, as part of God's way of love. There will be many people who own things. In other words, they might own things like property, They might own things like a business or a company. They might have be a part of an institution or even a part of a, of a government department or something like that. Right. And that owner might discover the principles of divine truth and decide that they wish to have advice into how to bring their property, business, institution or government or department or whatever into more harmony with love. Does that make sense? They, might, they may feel that. And what, what uh, we feel we want to give people the opportunity to do, I might just use some different colours here, what we want to do, give them the opportunity to do is we want to give them the opportunity to receive that advice no matter what their condition no matter what their soul condition is, no matter what they're currently doing. So, so, for example, we'd be happy even for somebody to come along to us and say, we've got an arms manufacturing plant and we'd like to bring it into more harmony with love. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> no, see, we don't want to close things down because, because there's all this infrastructure and all of this resource that's been put into these places. We don't want to close them down. We want to, we, in the case of an arms manufacturer, change what they manufacture, perhaps. But, but we don't want to just, just go, no, close it down, get rid of it. That, that's not what we're into doing. What we're into doing is to change the role to become more loving. Does that make sense? So, so we would be happy to provide advice to them about how to help them become more loving, but still maintain the business now, obviously, they're probably not going to maintain an arms manufacturing business if they operated in harmony with love anymore, but, but their business may change into some other kind of business 
that where a lot of the tools and a lot of the infrastructure could all be used in exactly the same manner as it's currently being used, just in a different direction. Does that make sense? If a religion comes along and says, oh, you know, we want to become more harmony, in more into harmony with God's way of love, what, what do we do? We don't say to them, we'll just stop the religion and start teaching all the divine truth principles in your religion. Because all we need to do is teach two primary principles in a religion, and that is God's love and how it enters the human soul and natural love and how to practice it. And once those two things happen in a religion, the religion will automatically make its own changes into more harmony with love, won't it? Can you see? So, so we don't see it as sort of like going along and condemning every single thing that's out of harmony with love and telling everyone they've got to get rid of it and all of that kind of stuff. What we feel more passionate about is having them come along and be advised as to how to bring it into more, in, more into line with love with every single action that they take. And we would like to be able to advise them not only from a spiritual perspective, but we'd like to also be able to advise them practically. In other words, in scientific process, in mathematical process, in all of these other types of process, environmental process and so forth, we'd like to be able to have the skilled volunteers available who are willing to give their gift of their time to any person who wishes to bring whatever they own into more harmony with God's way of love. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. So it's a fairly all-encompassing goal, right? Where there will be, at the moment, we've decided upon, I think it's about 15 or 16 different teams which we feel we'll be needing for the God's Way of Love organisation to become skilled enough to be able to provide this advice to all sorts of people, whether they be from any walk of life, any business, any religion, any, all of these different areas of life, right? So that being the case, there needs to be some way or mechanism involved that, that we can help the person who owns whatever it is make the changes they want to make. And it, there will be, in, there'll be two forms of primary agreements. One will be an... And it's probably not big enough, is it? Has everyone seen that? An owner? An ownership agreement between God's way of love and the owner. Now, don't think that this is all going to be in writing because the way we see it is this. The owner comes along and says to the directors of the organisation, I would like you to give me some advice on how to bring my, let's say it's a business, my business into more harmony with love. And I'd love for you to maybe channel some information for me about that and give me some information, some technical information and so forth and so forth. Now, the directors aren't going to sit there and go, nah, I don't think so. Like, we need a paper agreement. Like, that's not the way we're going to feel. We feel that if anybody in that moment decides to get information about truth, then why wouldn't you give them the gift of that knowledge immediately? So what we will do with the owner... Now, the owner is benefiting, we feel, the owner is benefiting himself or herself in this process because they are the person who owns the business or they are the person who owns the property. They would retain such ownership. So they, never, they don't have to give their property away to God's way of love or give their business to God's way of love for it to happen. Does that make sense? They retain the ownership of whatever it is that they have control over. They're just coming along to us and saying, we would like to get some advice. Now, obviously... There needs to be a mechanism in place where, where we're giving advice to a person who's actually going to follow the advice. <laughs> now, if the owner doesn't want to follow the advice, then there's little point in giving them the advice. Does that make sense? We might as well not spend that time giving those, that particular person advice and give the advice to somebody else. So, so the agreement, if you like, whatever the verbal arrangement is between the God's way of love and the owner, would automatically disband if the owner decided, oh, I don't think I want to follow that advice. So in other words, we, we would then say, well, that's fine, but don't come and get any more advice <laughs> because you're wasting our time. And we, we are volunteering our time and our time should be valued. 
Like that's a simple point of love. So, so the agreement between the owner and God's way of love is basically simple. If the owner desires to follow the advice, then the God's way of love organization can continue to provide the advice. If the owner decides they don't want to follow the advice, which is their right, then the God's way of love organization will not give them any more advice until they want to follow the previous advice. Does that make sense? Just a simple verbal <laughs> arrangement between the owner and the organisation. Joy, if we could have the mics. The mics are coming down the sides today, so not up the middle because that way they don't... It's just a simple comment. It's yep. really what you already do at Kyabra. It's, it's already what we do at Kyabra and also already what we do up here with the group of people who own a property up here, yes, exactly. Um, so what we're doing um, down at Kyabra, for example, what Joy's raised, for those of you who don't know, is Kyabra Station is a sheep station owned by a, a company which is controlled by a group of people. Now that group of people have decided that they wish to bring the sheep station into more harmony with love. And, and what they've asked us to do is to go down there on a periodic basis, and myself and Mary go down there quite regularly, and what we do is we just give them that advice. Now most of the advice is soul-based advice. Most of it's about their emotions and so forth, but there's a lot of advice of what we're giving them on the property itself as well, in terms of what to do with the property. Now they have the right, because they're the owner of the property, to reject that advice. But I also have the right to no longer provide them advice if they reject the previous advice. Does that make sense? And, and that can be in just an individual decision as to what happens and, and when. So, for example, if an owner got a heap of advice and then did none of it and then come back for more advice, you'd have to question whether the owner is really keen on following God's way of love, wouldn't you? But if the owner followed some of the advice at least, then the God's Way of Love organisation could feel quite comfortable with continuing to give some more advice. Can that door be closed if, so that people don't go in and out of there? Just give it a yank, babe. With your push down and give it a yank. That's it. Thanks, babe. Yeah, so does that make sense to everyone? Yep, Christina, you want to ask a question? Just wait for the mic to come. Yeah. I'm a business owner and I've been praying this for this for a very long time. What you're presenting is what I've been praying for yeah. and really desiring because I really want to... A lot of the stuff of the normal way of business uh, just hasn't felt right for me and the marketing and all the way we've been doing things just doesn't make any sense to me. And yep. so I've had a huge desire to do it God's way yeah. and just being clueless, really knowing to where, to, where to do Where to start and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. just the communication, the loving communication and just changing the way, you know, we communicate yep. to the world yeah. about what we do. And the beauty of this from the God's Way of Love organisation's perspective is there is no strings attached... In other words, you can decide to ignore uh, the advice or not. It's up to you. So there's no strings attached. There's no money changing hands. Right? So there's no transaction involved. You're not paying for the services. Um, of course, the God's Way of Love organisation does accept gifts, just like myself and Mary accept gifts. And, and the God's Way of Love, when it does accept those gifts, has to pay taxation on those gifts that are received. And the, the gifts don't have to be monetary. They can be equipment and other things that we can then give away to other people as, as, we, as we do things. The beauty of that kind of arrangement is that um, the, any person has very little reason to not investigate the relationship. So they don't, you know, they're not having to give away their livelihood or they're not having to confront their children about, oh, I've just given away your inheritance or any of those kind of things, right? Because none of that is happening. It's just an arrangement between the God's Way of Love organisation and the owner of anything to, to actually bring whatever it is they own into more harmony with love. And the God's Way of Love organisation recognises that the owner has 
a selfish motive in that process. And when I say a selfish motive, they, in this case that I'm giving you, they are not concerned about giving something to the world or something like that. It's they wanting to do business or they wanting to have their property look better or, or you know, they have some kind of personal motivation and that's okay with us. As long as it comes into more harmony with love, I don't see any problem with that. Does that make sense? Um, so, so that is one kind of arrangement that we will make with people. Now, of course, the only thing we need to know from the owner is who do we talk to to discuss matters and when, basically. And of course, their contact details and so forth. So the owner may appoint, let's call it, like if it's a group of owners like who own a business or it might be a company who, who owns a business, um, the owners would appoint what we feel is a person who's an in-between, the in-between person. What should we call them? Well, mediator I don't sort of go for that much because mediator implies that, yeah, the mediator replies that there's something to mediate and we don't see that there will be any disagreement because if there was a disagreement, there's already no strings. There's already, it's already, the arrangement has been disbanded. We, we'd prefer to call them just a representative. Now, that might be the owner themselves, but it might be somebody they trust. Or it, It's better if it's one person because you know, then we're not dealing with 50 people in a room all having different opinions that we've got to convince before you know, an action is taken. Obviously, we would prefer that the person who is the representative has the full trust of the owner. And, uh, and if the owner is the representative, then obviously that's not a problem. Now... The only, do, the only thing is, though, we would expect the owner to pay for any of the materials involved in making the changes needed. Does that make sense? So the God's Way of Love organisation is providing, we'll often provide even manpower, so like the environment team, we'll leave, if they were fixing up a property, we'd be going there and you know, working on the property under the full understanding that somebody else owns the property and under the full understanding that we may work on the property and the next week he might sell it and we'd be happy with the gift that we've given to that property. Does that make sense? Um, and that will teach us, any person who's a member of God's way of love, will teach us how to love in that we love with no strings attached. So, so this is the arrangement. Now, that's one type of arrangement that we, we're considering re entering into. When I say considering, this is what we would like to set up. Uh, uh, so basically, it's a no-strings-attached arrangement with an owner of any property, business, institution, government, doesn't matter to us what it is. Um, they just requesting information and help to bring their um, business institution into more harmony with love. And the God's way of love process will, depending on our capacity, provide volunteers and advice in order to help them do that. Does that make sense? And any materials that they uh, desire to or need to purchase in order for that to happen, they need to decide to purchase that themselves. And if they don't, then obviously we can't do that particular job. That's okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. So is that pretty clear? Pretty easy to understand? Right. So the owner can come along at any time and say, look, I don't want you guys on my property anymore. We say, no worries. Right. And all of you who have worked on the property and have all got this like ownership thing going on with the property, you'll all be confronted with that, won't, won't you? When they say, what about my trees that I planted on that property? Like... Well, that's still there, obviously, but what if the next owner comes and digs them all out? Well, it's still an expression of your gift. And so my feelings are that's okay too if they decide to do that. I feel the likelihood of it, them doing it is quite low, but it's possible, right? It's possible for any person who we give a gift to to misuse the gift, and that's possible. Now, obviously, we wouldn't continue to give a gift to a person who misuses the gift. That's also an act of love to ourselves. But we wouldn't feel bad about having given a gift to somebody else and they then misuse it. We're not like a parent who gives his son a car 
and his son wraps it around a tree and then the parent yells at the son for doing the wrong thing with the gift. Uh, we're not going to be like that because that's not God's way of love. All right. Is there any questions about that kind of arrangement? No? All makes sense? Yeah. Gary, would you like to? Um, I'm just thinking, like, if I was to buy a property and then got the environment team to come in and uh, plant trees and do it up, then I sold it. Yep. Then I bought another one and I kept on doing it. Is there any limit to that? Well, it, you could certainly do it the first time, but we are not going to come on your property the second time. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Because so of you doing be, it the first time. There will be sort of rules about that though, wouldn't there? When you say rules, no, the principle is one of love to ourselves. Why would volunteers come and do something to your property to no benefit to you, except monetarily, and no benefit to anybody else really in the end? If the property is really degraded mm -hmm. and, and just say, oh, I um, yep. done it up yep. and it was all you know, back to nature and everything... Then and the environment team helped you with that process. Helped me with that. Yep. Then I bought, had enough money to buy another property, done yep. the same thing with that. Yep. Just kept going around the whole area doing that. Yep. There'd That'd be, be wonderful. I'd be involved in that. There'd be no, <laughs> you know, no worries in that. No worries in that. But nobody else would get the benefit. Well, it's not so that much either. about that. It's about whether you, are, you have an underlying motive. You see, if your motive to sell the property was just to make a profit on the donated, the donated time of the volunteers then that's an impure motive and, uh, and no, we if, would... If the, me, if my motive was pure if you, and just wanted to do up the whole country around, you know, 500,000 yeah, yeah. yeah. acres, yeah. then there would be nothing wrong with that, would there? No, not at all, not at all. So it gets back down to the motive of the individual and this is where the directors of God's way of love need to assess the motive of the individual. If the motive of the individual was to make a profit from the volunteer's effort... Right? and if that's the motive of the individual, then we wouldn't engage with that person again until they'd work through their emotional reason why they wanted to do that. Right? However, if the motive of the individual was to buy a property and beautify it and then even sell it and then buy another one and beautify it and sell it just because they want to beautify properties one after the other, then I feel that's a pretty good motive. Right? And even if they make a profit of it, I don't see that as being such a bad motive. If the profit all went into the next property... Well, it might not. It's up to the person who owns the property what they do with their own profits. Yeah, but that's, that's what the motive I was talking about would be, you know? Yeah, but see, see, what I'm saying is I don't see any problem in giving a gift to you and you make a profit on my gift. Mm. I don't see any problem with that. Do, do you understand? Now, many of you may see a problem with that and I feel that's an issue with love that you have. All right? But I feel if I give my gift and I give it in an open-hearted, loving manner to another person and they then make a profit on that, like at the moment, you, do you know the truths that I'm giving away? There's people already around the world who have downloaded a lot of them, turned them into their own things and then charged for them. Do you know that? That's actually happening. Right? Now, I don't see any problem with that. It's up to them. That's their conscience and it's their issue. You know, many of them don't even acknowledge the source of, those, of that information. And that's their issue. Does that make sense? Not, not my issue. My issue is, am I going to continue to give my gift of my love, no matter what somebody else does with it? Now, some of you may feel quite resentful if somebody, if you worked on a property for three or four weeks, you did a heap of things, and then they sold it, put a hundred grand in their pocket, went on to their, you know, bought a Mercedes-Benz uh, or Rolls Royce or something, you know, they wouldn't afford a Rolls Royce. Maybe, you know, maybe they bought a car with the profits and whatever else, and then they wanted you to do the same thing again. Many of you would probably have an issue with that, whereas I don't have an issue with that. If I'm in my passion and desire, I don't see what the problem is. As long as the property itself is benefiting and the person is benefiting from my interaction with them with regard to love, then I don't see an issue with that. I do see an issue with them having an original purpose and motivation of making a profit off of volunteers' time. That is certainly an unloving desire and therefore the second time it happened, because you wouldn't know the first time necessarily, but the second time it happened, you would have to seriously consider whether you want to have dealings with that person again, wouldn't you? And that's fair enough too. 
And that would also be an act of love to yourself to consider that. Yep. So um, I don't see any problem with a person buying a property, beautifying it, selling it, buying another property, beautifying it, selling it, and, uh, and doing whatever they do with their funds. Uh, it's up to them what they do with their funds. If we've been personally passionate in the process of giving the gift of our love to the property, then it's not going to go astray. Yep. It's not going to go astray at all. And we're all learning how to love properly in the process. That's the beauty. Yeah. Is there any other questions about this particular arrangement? Um, Renee, I think it is, and, and Lizzie. Thanks. I've still got quite a problem with um, the gift giving and the whole love around the issue. Mm -hmm. What happens if someone has a really selfish motivation about receiving help or asking for help? Well, then, then we'd soon discover that motivation and part of the God's way of love advisory process would be to advise them, well, we actually feel that you have a selfish reason for you know, wanting people to give you gifts and you, you demand gift. You're not receiving them, but you're demanding of them. And we can't enter... And in fact, there's a clause in the Constitution, actually, of the God's way of love organisation that says that we will not give a gift to anybody who demands it because it's out of harmony with love to do so. Right? So, so the reality is there are principles of love that we would then put into place under those circumstances. The problem with most people in the world today is they try to prevent unloving behaviour before it happens. The God's Way of Love organisation is not going to be involved with that. What we're going to do is allow a process to occur where unloving behaviour will definitely occur... And I'll say it's going to definitely occur because nobody we're dealing with is the one with God yet. So the unloving behaviour is definitely going to occur. And then what we want to do is advise that person or you know, the owner in this case of a person, property or whatever. Um, the owner, not of a person, of a property, of a business, an institution or government. We want to advise them how to bring it into more harmony with love. Now if they reject such advice, then the arrangement is broken. And it's just a simple matter of walking away from the arrangement. Now, if they've purchased all the materials involved in the process, all we do is basically we're just stopping the volunteer effort and stopping the advisory process. Does that make sense? So it's really quite simple. And we, but we don't want to make a heap of rules before we begin in the arrangement. Because that doesn't give the person the opportunity to act unlovingly. Did I hear that right? Like, <laughs> you see, we need to give people the opportunity to act, whether it be lovingly or unlovingly. And if they act lovingly, we want to, we want to encourage such behaviour. And if they act unlovingly, we want to address such behaviour. Do we not? That's what God does with us, isn't it? Right? That's what we want to do. So we're actually giving these owners opportunities to act unlovingly with us. That's what we want to do. And when they act unlovingly, then the God's way of love of advisory, you know, whoever is advising them, whoever has that personal relationship goes, well, it talks to the representative, says, well, you've acted unlovingly here. Can you see this? They explain why and everything. And then the person has the chance to change their behaviour. They have a chance to go, wow, yeah, you're right, actually. I didn't think of it that way. You know, I didn't realise that was going on. And they have the chance then to change, do they not? Now, if we don't give them the chance to act unlovingly by making a whole set of rules before we begin that then say, if you act unlovingly here, if you act unlovingly there, if you act unlovingly here, then we terminate our agreement. They're not allowed to make any mistakes at all. Now, who does that sound like? Doesn't that sound like your mummy and daddy not wanting you to make any mistakes at all before you begin your life? Like, that's not what we want to replicate. What we want to do instead is to give them the opportunities to make mistakes and the opportunity to see how they're going to react once it's addressed. Now, if the reaction is unloving when it's addressed, now that's a different matter. That's something that we can deal with separately. Right? But if the action is, is their reaction to the original advice is now loving, then why wouldn't we continue the arrangement? Why wouldn't we? There's no reason why we wouldn't. Can you see the whole idea? 
So the whole idea is to, be, to give people the opportunity to act unlovingly and to receive feedback about that unloving behaviour. Right? That's what we want to do. And we want to do it in all of these different areas of life. Uh, I've probably missed one or two because there's going to be quite a lot of different areas. Religion is a major area that we want to do as well. There's areas of science, education and so forth. I could make a very long list here of all the different things that are, we want to be involved in in the future with regards to providing advice and having volunteers to help persons through the process of change to become more loving. So how does that sound so far? Sound, sound good? Yeah. So how do you feel when you see that? Can you feel that feeling of, wow, that feels good, eh, doesn't it? It feels good to be able to do that. Yeah. Joy, you would like to say? And oh, Lizzie was going to ask a question too, so we just put it back. I'm just starting to see your bigger picture of how we actually go out and help the world by demonstrating love yeah. in, in any area. Yeah. That's something you've referred to before because I sort of think, oh, if you, if you had one council that asked us to come in and help them with their parks and gardens and then another one would want to and another one would want to and it would be the same with schools and everything, yeah. all kinds of businesses. I know people in our yeah. organisation who've got businesses and they don't know what to do with them. You know, yeah. a lot of us have walked away, yeah. but if we could go into those businesses and help them... Yeah, we don't want to take people away from their passions, no. right? We want to have them fully engaged in their passion, mm. but just more in mm. harmony with love. I see it's the kind of the thin edge of the wedge to actually make a change in the world in any area. Yeah, because, uh, mm. because obviously you get involved with individuals firstly, then you get mm. involved with different things which are now bigger than individuals in some ways. I don't, mm. you know, I don't feel in a love way, but, mm. but in, in the sense that a business is a conglomeration of individuals, so therefore bigger than one individual. Mm. And, and as a result of that, ha has a lot of power to change the world if they bring things into harmony with mm. love. But you might offer it to Channel 7. <laughs> you reckon they need it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can only help. You never know. They might come along and ask. Um, I might get them firstly, though, to uh, re-correct some of the things that they lied about. <laughs> you never know. Uh, um, Lizzie, you wanted to ask if we have the mic back there and then back. You sort of kind of answered it. It was just a bit before, after um, Monique behind me there. It was more I was feeling really passionate about... Um, the car, you know, so he has $100,000, which is what Gary said, and he goes away and he goes and spends it on a car. And I was just feeling into the, the passion of that person, thinking, well, questioning it, thinking, well, do I really need that car? Maybe, maybe now, now that I've learned from this, now I know what God's way of love is really all about, that I'll actually spend that in a different way, just through our... Uh, he may feedback. or he may not. Yeah. He may or may not. And it's totally up to him what he does. As long as he is dealing with us in a loving manner mm. and, and, allow, and allowing the advice to change what he, he or she does or, or, or feels as well in that process, mm. then I don't see any problem with them having wealth or popularity or any other yeah, thing yeah, that sure. people yes. may search for. Yes, right? but I guess what I'm saying is something like maybe in his heart it, it would be a gift like maybe to a school that needed a bus of instead course. of him buying himself you see, a car. It would be something within his soul that changed within himself. Spot on. Yeah. Because, because what happens to your soul when you're given gift after gift and there's no strings attached is sooner or later you feel pretty bad about not giving gifts yourself with no with strings attached you know without yeah. strings attached and so forth and so so often it does have a change but we can't expect that with no. you yeah no i, I understand see? that too no we can't expect that because the reality is god gives us gifts every single moment of our lives which many most of which by the way we reject and god continues to give us another one that's the reality too but god doesn't do it at her this advantage or doesn't break her own rules of love towards herself in doing so and this is something that we need to also learn to do so it's just principles that we need to learn if we go back a couple of rows hi AJ how you doing um with regards to business owners mm -hmm. um with the way we're doing things with, by donation, yep. is that also part of what we can teach 
um, businesses or is it sort of not practical for, for businesses to No, it's very donation? practical for business. This whole concept that it's not practical to do a business by donation is, is actually because of, uh, comes from our injuries really in the end. The reality is that we feel part of the process of helping businesses is by helping them come to this point of doing things by, no, by donation and, and not overextending themselves either. See, a lot of businesses overextend themselves with debt and then they can't do anything by donation because they've overextended with debt and they now need a certain amount of funds coming in every month to pay their debt and so forth. So, so part of doing business is there's going to be changes. And I can have a whole discussion about that of a fair few hours of how to bring a business into harmony with love and that's probably not what I want to do today. Mm. But certainly the whole aspect of gift giving a gift because you're passionate, will result in any business growing substantially. Right. Will, will result in it growing. And every single person in the business will eventually, if they deal with their unhealed emotions that they have about money, will eventually attract at least enough money to live and usually far more than that. Yep. Once you deal with the... And this is part of the process, you see. When, when we start doing something we're passionate about, initially we have a lot of injuries about money when we do it. And so what we finish up doing is we charge a fee mm. for what we do. But you see, if we started from the point of view of not charging a fee at all and we'd just go by do donation or by gift, people giving us a gift, then what would happen is that within the first week it would look like we were going broke because the majority of us have huge emotional issues around money and we were going to attract that. And so what we would do then was win a week or two, we'd probably deal with those emotions, and then after that things would go smooth. <laughs> Does that make sense? Sure. The problem that we have today is that we look like we're going broke, so what we do is we, we change the charge so that we're not going to go broke. We don't deal with the emotion. Mm. And this is where the principles of divine truth need to put into place. So to, for, a business to put, for a business owner to put into place the principles that they'd be advised to take by God's way of love, um, it's going to be very, very difficult to, initially. Now some of, some of you have put them into place and found actually that they do work, but, uh, but that's not going to be the generally accepted thing initially. No. Yeah? The other thing is that um, the, the only thing that we feel that needs to occur is the business or property or government or whatever needs to indemnify God's way of love against any claim. Because the, the owner needs to take full responsibility for taking action on what they've been advised. Does that make sense? So if God's way of love advises something and the owner follows that advice which causes a half cut in his sales right and then decides that he wants to sue God's way of love for giving them that advice he obviously doesn't understand the principles of soul-based attraction right and so he the owner will need to indemnify in writing God's way of love before God's way of love could actually provide the owner advice. Does that make sense? And that's the only piece of paperwork that would ever be signed. And it's up to the owner to follow that advice. He has his own free will. He has his own responsibility for what he runs. And or, and, or she, by the way, this he or she runs. Um, and so therefore, he or she would need to take that responsibility that is theirs. Now, God's Way of Love organisation is going to be very focused on making sure the advice that they give is always in harmony with love. And this is where many of you who are a part of the God's Way of Love organisation are not being loving. Because a lot of times the advice you give others is not very loving. And if you're going to do it as a part of the God's Way of Love organisation, you're going to need to become far more loving. For example, some of you who are mediums have a tendency to provide advice to other people about their lives. The majority of times you're not being very loving. Now, we would need to address that, you see. If you were 
we need to be very careful in the organisation that the advice provided under the guise of the organisation is actually loving and truthful. And that means that people are going to have to learn to not open their mouth <laughs> unless they know for certain that they're being both loving and truthful. We're far better off in the organisation saying nothing than we are saying the wrong thing. Can you see that? Yep. Now this is something that many of you are yet to put into practice in your own lives yet. You are very free with giving your advice when you don't know what's going on at the emotional level yet. Or you're giving advice that spirits are giving and you don't know the condition of the spirits that are giving it, for example. And we need to seriously look at that particular problem. Because, because the God's Way of Love organisation has a responsibility to ensure that its advice and its, uh, and its volunteering efforts are based on love and truth, not based on any other thing. And this is where it's very, very important. So if we don't know something for certain, we are far better off asking somebody who we feel may know for certain and, and in the end referring it to eventually perhaps even the directors of the organisation. And if they don't know for certain, then we just don't take the action. Does that make sense? Until we know for certain what to do. This is very, very important. Yep. Now, does that make sense, that arrangement? Let's call that an owner arrangement or an ownership arrangement. Uh, Jen, you'd like to ask a question? Yep. So, and then come down to Lorleen on this side. If we can microphone down here. Just keep your hand up, Lorleen. Yep. Fire away, Jen. I think you've partially answered my question already, but however, I will ask. Um, what kind... I understand in a concrete form the, um, the labouring capacity of, the, say, the environment team, mm -hmm. but are, in, what other, in what other forms would the God's way of love provide service to community bodies? In every possible form you could think of, Jen. Yeah. So, okay. so you know, I can think of I can think of hundreds and hundreds of different situations where we definitely want to provide a service, and and I, rather than me list them all, if you could just think of every single way and walk of life that you could in, you could imagine, we would want to have some kind of service being able to prov be provided. So then, if we're not in the condition to know... <laughs> to know... Um, answers, or... Yeah, can I just state something so about answers? This is about giving the gift of you to another. It's not about giving them answers. Can you see the difference? You see, many of you think, think that you, when you speak the words to another person that you're actually giving them a gift. Sometimes you're not because the emotion coming out of you is one of condemnation, criticism, judgment. That's not a gift. That, and, that, and what you're trying to do is give them words that are actually not a gift of you but a gift of your criticisms and your judgments. Uh, and that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is learn to give the gift of ourselves, our time in particular, to another person and do it because we love doing it, not because we feel we have to. So, so for example, um, there might be this opportunity, that, like the Lions Club might come along right, and say, we'd like to do a fundraiser for such and such. And, and if we feel it's in harmony with the principles of love, then we, we say, we'll provide 20 volunteers for you who, who are part of maybe the hospitality team who would like to cook cakes for you. Right? And all of those people are in their passions and that's what we do. We just give them the cakes and they go and sell them and do what they want with the money. Like, I don't see any problem with that. Does that make sense? And I feel as that, as that desire in us to give the gift of ourselves builds, 
what will happen is people around us will start recognizing that gift more and then they'll start engaging that gift within themselves of giving the gift of themselves and before you know it the principles of love without having to be taught in a seminar get taught to the person and all of a sudden they're becoming more loving which is which is how the world is going to change is it not by them engaging love in their day-to-day -day life not, not by coming along to a seminar and talking about it yeah so we need to stop thinking along the lines of oh, I've got to teach the truth to others as if the truth is a long set of principles that we can write down we need to start thinking along the lines I'm going to teach the truth to others by becoming an example of truth myself right and living the truth myself living love myself that's how I'm going to be able to teach others and that means when other people don't appreciate you instead of going you don't appreciate me and getting angry with them you're no longer in a state where you're being love and you're out of harmony with the principles of truth now many of you are getting angry regularly with other people at the moment thinking that you're in a better state of truth and that gives you the right to get angry because you know the truth and they don't and I put to you that if you're getting angry with a person that's demonstrating you're in probably a worse condition than they are does that make sense and that, there's a serious thing we've got to look at there right? we've got to stop the judgment stop the criticism stop the rage and we need to get into the real space of living the truth in our day-to-day -day life and living love in our day-to-day -day life and this is the 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 opportunity here for the God's way of love organization is to help you as a member of it any of you who, who want to be members or volunteers and by the by, by the way you don't have to be a member to be a volunteer um, anybody who wants to volunteer learns how to give the gift of themselves without expectation without even the expectation that you get treated well doing it yeah and that's going to be quite confronting emotionally is it not yes. yeah well, uh, my question is um, how I see the similarities between what you're saying here to how we are trying to follow divine truth, mm. is that not? Mm. Like it's exactly the same except Excuse one me. is an institution or larger but yep. isn't that all the same? The only difference is this is a institution, right, incorporated because we have taxation principles we've got to adhere to and we have laws that we've got to adhere to and and has a constitution that we've got to adhere to that's the only difference but the constitution is built around the principles of divine truth so so it should be no difference in that organization that there would be in our day-to-day -day life if we're sincerely practicing divine truth in our life exactly right yep Karen at the back thank you Thanks for the guys handling the mics for us today. If I wanted to teach someone how to play a musical instrument, would it be a good idea if I asked whether I'm in a good condition to do that first? Get feedback about myself? I feel the best thing to do, Karen, in anything is just to engage the desire first and then see what the law of attraction brings you because your law of attraction will always bring you events that demonstrate the condition you're in so if you get a, a child who's unruly for example and you're trying to teach them the piano and um, then I'd be looking at myself if you get a child who doesn't want to come to the lessons and their mum and dad forces them to come then I'd look at myself and so forth with every single thing that I do I wouldn't be looking at them and going oh what's the problem with them they don't really seem motivated right the reality is they're not going to be motivated while they've got an overbearing person trying to treat them piano so so we need to feel firstly all the time about what's going on coming out of us yeah. that causes whatever we are attracting into our own life so 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 if we have a thing where we're teaching a musical instrument for example and we have five students and none of them are motivated then we need to look at our own soul condition as to what is creating that lack of motivation in all of our students 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Focus that on that first. But focus on your desire because if you don't ever do the desire and you sit down there questioning it before you begin anything, you'll never begin anything. Because that's just a desire to be perfect before you begin. None of us are perfect before we begin. We just need to engage desire and let the process of engaging it and the laws that God has in place expose within us the errors that we have that we need to correct. I was wondering driving here about whether there is or could be some kind of facility or kind of notice board for people who wanted to offer and wanted to receive that kind of skill? Well, no, because God's way of love is not in the process of maintaining or running businesses or m merging skills. However, it has a volunteer army, if you like, of people who are willing to give the gift of their time in an advisory capacity and the gift of their time physically to people who want to engage them. We don't want to get involved in the management or maintenance or the, or the you know, oh, this person's got a house to let. You know, we put that up as an advertisement. We're not in the process on God's way of love of making advertisements. Like You don't see me making advertisements even uh, with regard to divine truth or, or, God's, or God's way of love. And my feelings are that we will never advertise or assist others to advertise their services or, or whatever it is that they are providing, even if they are providing them for free. They need to look at their, what I would call, law of attraction as to if they feel they have a gift uh, to offer and nobody's taking it up, then there's some emotional reasons inside of themselves as to why those particular things are not occurring. Like all of, all of you um, are here right now because you took the chance, you, you, you looked on a website to find the uh, time and so forth of being here that I personally created with my own effort and time. And I didn't expect you to create that for me. And it'll be the same principles with dealing with these owners. We're not going to create a heap of things for the owners. There's got to be, if, if there's love involved and desire on the, and, and passion on behalf of the owner, then the owner is going to have to do quite a lot of the work that's going to be involved in making the changes. Does that make sense? And that, that's understandable, is it not? If they have the passion, they would want to. That's the reality. So God's way of love is not about making things happen for people. It's about exposing the principles of divine truth to the person. So, so in other words, a person comes along and says, look, I've started up my business and I've put it in harmony with you know, love with regard to gifts, but nobody wants to give me a gift. <laughs> and, we go, and we don't go, oh, uh, all right, well, no worries. We'll drum up a heap of business for you with people who want to give you a gift. That's not what we're going to do. What we'll do instead is we go, okay, we need, there's a principle here that, with God's way of love, and that is the principle of the law of attraction and what your soul attracts. So what you need to do is, the advice we need to give them is, what you need to do is look at the law of attraction as regards to money. What, what are your belief systems about money? What are your belief systems about gifts? What are your belief systems about what you're doing? Are you doing this for a pure motive or are you doing it because you want people to pay you and so forth? Does that make sense? So what, what that, that will do is enable the owner to work through their own emotional condition, which is the primary controller of their property business and so forth, and they then will be able to address that particular issue. Does that make sense to everyone? And this is why the advice that needs to be given has to be given in harmony with love, because you, you might think it's loving to go, oh, this person's got a lovely service. I'd really like to see it happen. So we'll help, it. He'll, he'll help him do it. Well, that's not what we're about. We're not going to do that. We're going to help him create it by changing his soul, not by some physical effort that we do. D does that make sense? Now, now, that principle is going to be a very important principle. It's actually in the Constitution. If you read the Constitution, that principle is there. Right? And this is what we need to do. And this is where the directors of the organisation will need to take care with the different choices that they make so that we have this arrangement where the owner themselves has some soul changes happening. 
in regard to their business or their property or their institution and so forth. Yep. Does that answer your question, Karen? Yep. Eagle? So um, this is basically the future, isn't it? There's no other, this gift-based economy, there's no other that will work. That's right, it's not a barter-based economy. And what, we're, what we're about, and one of the things that the 14, and you'll, you'll hear a talk tomorrow from uh, Bella and Corny about why the 14 have returned. One of the reasons why the 14 have returned is to actually introduce a gift-based economy to the world. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Interesting concept, huh? A gift-based economy. Not a barter-based economy. Can you see the difference? Very different. Yep. What happens when one of the volunteers for the, from the God's Way of Love organisation who's growing and learning makes a mistake in their advice? Um, then obviously it's up to us as an organisation to correct that mistake. The arrangement we would have to have with the owner, the owner has indemnified us against those kind of things anyway. It's an indemnity that covers all things. And so the owner can't ask for recourse. But, but the God's Way of Love organisation, if it was sincere, would certainly want to apologise and try to repair the damage of such advice. So this is something we'd definitely want to do if we had the means at our disposal to do. But in particular, the individual involved would need to do something about that. And if... They don't, dis they don't want to, then we have to consider whether we can allow them to continue being a volunteer for the organisation. Yep. Now, don't feel that being a volunteer is a right. There's, this order, there's sort of this assumption at the moment with the teams that, oh, I can rock up at any team, it's my right. And many, many of you, for example, for the mediumship team, many of you are coming along to the mediumship team and you're not in a passion to do mediumship. You just come along whenever I give a talk for the mediumship team. The real people who are in a passion to do the mediumship come along if anybody was giving a talk <laughs> to help the mediumship team, no matter who it was. That, that, that are people in their passion. And what we want to do is we want to stop taking actions because we think we're missing out and we need to start taking actions because we actually desire them. And this is a part of the God's Way of Love organisation. So part of our role as directors of the organisation and team leaders in the organisation is to confront the team members with what they're doing and bring it into harmony with love. That's a part of the leadership process, to bring the, the teams into more harmony with love. So the chance then of somebody just giving advice that's out of harmony with love would reduce. Does that make sense? If we, if we do it that way. Many of us sort of feel that I, I can be a member of this team and that team and this team and that team and this team and that team and the only reason why I'm a member of all these different teams is because I feel like I'm missing out if I'm not a member. And I want to receive the emails and I want to know what's going on, which is another emotion. Right? My suggestion is to reappraise your own membership of any team and ask yourself, are you really passionate? Because right? if you're really passionate then we've got something we can work with for that particular team. You're better off being on one team that you're really passionate about than being on lots of different teams because you just want to know what's going on. Right. Now, the way the teams will work is that the teams, and I'm just in the process of setting this up at the moment, the teams will have their own email addresses and the teams are going to be worldwide teams. So in other words, a person from any place in the world can be a member of a team. The, team, the worldwide team will have a leader and then there might be sub-leaders, if you like, in different locations. But they'll all be under the control of a leader of those particular teams. All right. So we might have an environment team and at the moment Dennis is the leader of that particular team and when I say at the moment, remember that any team leader can be removed at any time. Because if they become unloving and they don't want to change, then they have to be removed. Can you see? No matter what they've done in the past, there's 
it, it is immaterial. We need to remain in harmony with love. So, so Dennis is the team leader of the environment team at the moment, and he has a secretary. Diana is the secretary of that team. And so, what happens is uh, there might be a members, there might be a little team set up in Scandinavia because there, there's people over there who would like to be involved in setting up an environment team. Now, that team in Scandinavia would come under the uh, management, if you like, of the team leader who is currently set up here in Australia. But, but that team would be educated by the team leader. So that might mean the team leaders finish up going to Scandinavia for a week or a month or something and helping the team learn a lot of basic principles. And because Scandinavia, in some places, it's uh, cold, you know, six months of the year um, compared to <laughs> what it is here, um, the team leaders might finish up learning quite a lot from the people there about the environment in the process, which will then add to that knowledge store that we have that we can then give as a gift to others. Yeah. So that's uh, the kind of things that we probably arrange. And it's already happening as well. Is there any other questions about this ownership, owner arrangement? Huh? We've exhausted that, have we? No worries. Okay, now there are some kind of things that the God's Way of Love organisation would like to set up. And one of them um, is a learning centre in different locations. So what I'm stating now applies to the owners who wish to set up a learning centre, which will be a different arrangement. Now the reason why it will be a different arrangement is basically this. In the first case of what I just described, the owner owns a property and the property or business or institution benefits the owner from the gifts that we're giving the owner. So the God's Way of Love organisation is actually just giving gifts to the owner and then the owner is doing what they will with those gifts. That's the first arrangement. Now if the owner decides to reject those gifts then obviously the God's Way of Love organisation would decide to no longer give them additional gifts or if the owner decided to misuse the gift in some way so for example if we donated some money to purchase a nursery for for something if that was a decision that we'd made and the owner goes out and buys a heap of guns with it instead then obviously we've got a problem right and we wouldn't be giving that owner anything unless they completely reversed that particular decision after that Right? Because it's, not a, it's out of harmony with love. But the owner is benefiting personally, in this case, from the gifts and the of what the volunteers are giving. Now, there's a different type of owner that we'll come against. And this different type of owner is not interested in the personal benefit of what we do for them, but rather is in a, in interested in a benefit to the world. Now, any person who is interested in doing something that benefits the world rather than just an individual or a group of individuals requires our special attention. Can you see why? Because obviously they have uh, already sorted out quite a lot of issues of love inside of themselves. They desire to do good things to, for, for others, and they are not interested in the personal benefit that that brings themselves. And that already demonstrates that they are in a better condition of love than the average owner. Does that make sense? Now, it could be an owner or group of owners. By the way, remember the owners, because an owner who owns a business might be shareholders, and there might be 500 of them. So that, that's a group of owners. So when I'm referring to the owner, I'm also potentially referring to a group of people rather than an individual. But what I am saying is that if it is a group, then we want to have a representative appointed, so we only have to deal with one individual. That's what we'd prefer. But the owners 
or owner, the group of owners or the owner themselves individually, may decide they want to do something that is of benefit to the world, not just of personal benefit. For example, they may have a fabrication business and they may decide what they would like to fabricate is some kind of device that provides electrical energy in, in day or night um, that's more in harmony with love than all of the current forms of energy production that we currently have. Now that would take, uh, uh, God's way of love would be very interested in that of course, right? Because we believe that energy should be free to all persons and it would be lovely if we had a mechanism to do that. So we would enter a, an arrangement with them where we would provide volunteers and gifts, but also we would, we would strongly consider providing monetary assistance to such people because the benefit is to the world. Now, the proviso would be that they do not copyright or trademark the development. Does that make sense? In other words, that they are sincere about the benefit to the world even if that meant the potential of them losing a copyright or trademark to another person. Now that's pretty harsh, but what can you do? <laughs> now the alternative is that when I say copyright, I mean that they copyright or trademark it in the sense that it's a, that it's a tight copyright or trademark, in the sense that they don't, um, they don't, own, they don't uh, what's the best way of putting it? They don't control the technology. So, so what I'm saying is that I'm perfectly happy for them to copyright or trademark the particular thing that's being developed as long as they have a stated intention of giving it to the world. So they can still copyright or trademark the particular invention to protect somebody else from doing that and then preventing them from giving it to the world. If that's their motive, that's fine. But if their motive is to copyright or trademark it in order to hold on to it and sell it to the world, that's no longer fine. Does that make sense? Now, anything that's of benefit to the world from a God's way of love organisation will come under a different concern in that it will be of higher priority than any other thing that we do in the organisation. Can you see why? Because the other things are benefiting individuals specifically, whereas this is benefiting the whole of humanity. Obviously, it has a higher priority. Right? Now, the benefit to the world has to be obviously assessed by the God's Way of Love organisation and probably by its directors, but different, and different people in the organisation will be assessed. Now, if we see it as benefit to the world and we see the owner has a sincere desire to bring it to benefit to the world, then we are very happy to use any and all, even all resources that we have to make it happen. But we're not going to go into debt to make it happen because the God's Way of Love organisation is not allowed to incur debt. Right. So we can only spend the resources we have, in other words. Now... Benefit to the world, you can, if you think about it, there's a lot of different things that might come under that banner, is there not? But one thing in particular um, that I wanted to focus on in terms of answering some of your questions is the learning centres. Because we feel our learning centres, the learning centres would be of benefit not just to a community but to the world. And we feel that anything we do on the learning centres, we would also need to have a focus of the benefit to the world. So in other words, this is, this is one of the reasons why I'm so hot on documentation right, with the teams. Because, because the things that we're doing as a team can benefit not just the place where you're doing it. They can benefit the world. And we need a way of having that information available and giving it to the world. And of course at this point in time, one of the simplest ways to do that is to have some computerised documentation, pictures and, and photographs and all sorts of things, proving its value and so forth, 
and just giving that to the world. That makes sense, doesn't it? And we feel the learning centres are going to be sort of like um, a combination of different events will be occurring on them, all of which we want to give to the world. All of the different benefits of which we want to give to the world. Now, I said earlier that God's way of love would not own any property. So how do we create a learning centre which is property-based without owning any property? And this is where we get back to the owners. An owner or a group of owners can establish a property which is of benefit to the world rather than of benefit to themselves as individuals. Now they would need to do that with some agreements between themselves as owners. And if there's one owner then obviously that owner would know what, what arrangement they've made. And they would actually say or, or dedicate that property to becoming a centre that gives benefit to the world of whatever happens on it. Do you follow me so far? So they're not selling it, they're not giving it to God's way of love, they still own it, but their internal commitment, which is in writing, would be that they want to develop their property in a way that it becomes a learning centre of benefit to the world. Now under those circumstances, anything that is done on the property itself, not the property itself, but anything that is done on the property that can be removed will automatically become the property of the God's Way of Love organisation. So to give you an example, let's say um, we start out with a blank property, you know, property with no houses on it, no anything on it, and somebody comes along and says, I want to give this property benefit of the world, I'm the owner, and I'm working, our organisation would work with the owner. And we would say, well, what we feel we need to do firstly is provide a few dams here and there, perhaps, for water collection. So we set up some kind of water collection mechanism to stop erosion and things like that. So, that, so we start doing that. Now, the owner would pay for the majority of that, although because he's now said it's a learning centre, we may also decide, if we had the funds available, to assist him with the payment of those particular things. So he builds a dam. Now, the dam's not movable. <laughs> Once it's there, it's there, and it's pointless really removing it unless it's in the wrong location. So, so that particular benefit has benefited his property, has it not? It hasn't benefited God's way of love just necessarily just yet, except in terms of its demonstration purposes, that's all. So that has now enhanced his property. So in that case, um, his property has benefited, but also... God's way of love has benefited because we've managed to do a few things and learn it through a few, few things in that process and there's a lot of people who have been involved in the process that might have learnt a bit more about love by their interactions and so forth and that's all beneficial. But let's say now that we've got some dams on the property, we decide that we want to create a seed bank on the property. All right? And a seed bank might involve the construction of some kind of... Uh, 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 dwelling or, or, or um, you know shed or a storage area or so forth and, and and shelves and all sorts of all sorts of things even computer systems and so forth to keep the whole thing documented and, and so forth and so we start to build that on the property and then the owner says I don't want it to be a learning center anymore what we would ask is that the owner then gives us all of that movable equipment that we can move to another property which is, which is designated of benefit to the world and we can continue that project. So on the learning centres there would be particular projects that would benefit the centre itself and then there's particular projects that are of benefit to the world. And these projects that are of benefit to the world we wish to retain control of in the God's Way of Love organisation as much as possible. Does that make sense? Because they not only benefit the learning centre itself or the, or the owner or the group of owners, but they have a longer term benefit 
to the world in general. And we would like to make sure that, that, that our effort in that particular regard continues. Now, under those circumstances, the property would benefit through the different things that we do to the property, hopefully. <laughs> if we do it lovingly, of course, it would always benefit. Um, and, and then the world will benefit through the example that's being given on the particular property. And there's a lot of things that can go on then in the learning centres themselves. Now, because of that, the owners would need to decide collectively whether they're willing to accept the advice of God's way of love for the learning centre. And if they want to do that and they want to make the property of benefit to the world, then we set up a written agreement with those owners about that property. We're not taking away the ownership of the property. The, the owners still have the right to sell the property. They still have the right to, you know, to stop the agreement. So the agreement is loose in that the owners still have control over the process. However, the difference is this, that any project that was of benefit to the world that happened on the property and any intellectual property and any um, copyright type details or any trademarks that might have occurred as a result of those particular projects all are owned by God's way of love. And the owner needs to let us move it to another location so that we can continue those particular projects. Does that make sense? Can you see the difference between the two arrangements? Yeah. Jen, would you like to ask a question? Yeah. How do those assets then reflect back in regards to your very first comments about taxation? In that you purchase containers, you perhaps apply for a government grant for the development of a seed bank, which is then moved from one property to another under the blanket of God, God's way of love. Mm -hmm. To my very limited understanding, that then becomes um, some sort of equity, isn't it? Or it's a tangible asset, asset but it's not yes. taxable until you sell it. And okay. we wouldn't sell it because it's of benefit to the world. Okay. Is, so it, does it not, is it not a pro, in a profitable No, because we're capacity? not profiting from it. Okay. It's a gift we're giving to the world. It's, not, it's given away. It's not, we're not selling it. So if I had 50 chairs I'm yep. not, and I wanted to donate them to God's way of love... Yep. So that people could sit on them to... Yep, God's way of love would not have to pay taxation on, on any form of the asset being received. They yep. wouldn't? No. Okay. No. You could donate it. You, you're the one who paid taxation on it because you bought the chairs and you paid GST when you bought the chairs and you obviously earned the money to buy the chairs and you must have paid taxation on the money that you used before you got the free money to buy the chairs and so you've already paid tax on all, the whole transaction anyway. And then you've just given the gift to... It's a gift that you've given to God's way of love so that we could have an auditorium with chairs. So God's way of love can accumulate goods then? Yes. That is totally different than accumulating property. Do you understand? No. <laughs> it's very different to accumulating a property like land. Very different process. So you see, we, we're, we can accumulate goods because we, we want to be a sort of like a, a shifting house of goods, if you like where some people give us this and then we go and do that with that and where some people give us that. And on the learning centre, for example, on the learning centre, we might have a property that's like 1,000 acres and we might decide, oh, it would be great for us to have a community hall on the property where we can all go there to meet and, and you know, instead of having to pay for halls like this, we might decide to have our own community hall in a specific location. All right? So what might happen then is a group of us get together and all decide to donate to creating that community hall, right? It's, it's on a property that somebody else owns, but we're still doing it. And we create the community hall, and, and that community hall is a totally functioning community hall sitting on that property. It's enhanced the value of this, per this owner's property. However, if it was of value to the world, and he said, I want to sell my property now, then we would 
then we would be able to, should be able to dismantle it. But if it's only of value to the property, we'd probably leave it there and go and build another one. Right. Okay, so can I ask you not something loopy then? Yeah. You go... No, I have limited understanding. This is what's behind my question. You go to a person's property... Um, we develop an orchard, say, mm -hmm. of beautiful fruit trees that become um, high-yielding high mm -hmm. come earth changes. Mm -hmm. People are hungry. Mm -hmm. We have the asset for one of... I don't know whether that's the right technical term, but... Well, we don't we have, have the asset. The owner does we have because we don't own the land. We have this beautiful resource of food. We don't. He does. He does. Yeah. And so then it would come back to the owner's intention as to what he did. Yeah, exactly. He could hoard it all if he wanted. the fruits of the labour, yeah, I guess. he could hoard it all. Now, if the owner was a learning centre, uh, wanted to have a learning centre, a benefit of the world, then he wouldn't... If he decided to hoard the fruit, right, rather than give it away, then he would automatically be out of harmony with the agreement and the agreement would terminate. Does that make sense? But if the owner was just an individual owner and he didn't have a learning centre agreement with us, he's allowed to do what he wants with his fruit trees. He could even rip them all out if he wanted to and cut them all down. Even if we planted them for him? Even if we planted them for him. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Can you see how it tests your viewpoint of love? Yeah. Even if we planted it for him. Yep. He could decide to pay it, charge $50 for it, although... They, you can't do much with fifty dollars in a in an economy that's worthless, right? Except maybe what the bottom with it, but that's but it's plastic <laughs> nowadays, so that's not much good. So so the reality is, you know, the reality is that he, he would want to probably benefit the world anyway with the result. Yep. <laughs> Can you see the difference, though, Jen? Like with the learning centre agreement, the owner is making a commitment to benefit the world. With the other agreement, which was just more of a verbal agreement, the owner is not making such commitment. We're still happy to help them become more loving because that's our goal, to help the world become more loving. Right? But, but the owners who make a learning set, who, who want to have a learning centre of benefit to the world, we are going to be more committed assisting those particular owners as an organisation because the benefit has a wider audience. Does that make sense to everyone? Like, because the benefit has a wider audience, we want to spend more of our time with that particular thing. When the benefit has a very narrow audience uh, or a na narrow recipient, then w w it makes more sense for us to spend the time where it was of larger benefit. Yep. Yep. Ram down the front. <coughs> Can I just ask the obvious question about the um, learning centre at uh, Wilkesdale? You can. Yeah. And what if after the break I answer some of those questions? Oh, fine. Okay. Because okay. uh, what I want to do firstly is present to you the general overview and then I'll prevent, present to you what I've discussed with the current owners of the learning centre there. Does that make sense? And we'll, we'll, we'll work our way through that. Yep. Okay. Is there any other questions that are more general? Uh, Joy, thanks. Um, is there another area of, rather than learning centres, would be maybe inventions like the alternative power? Totally. Yeah. Remember, remember the category is not a learning centre category, it's a benefit to the world category. Right? This one, I'm having a struggle with this thing to get it off. So it could be anything to do with cleaning water, inventing new power sources? Yeah, it um, could be any type of project that benefits the world. So the benefit to the world is not just about land or property. It could be about inventions. It could be about specific processes, all sorts of different things that we feel are going to be a benefit to the world, not just something that is a land or a specific location. Yeah? Because it reminds me of um, all the projects that uh, were in Pascus mm -hmm. all had that. But it's a question of whether the owner is of the heart to want to benefit the world by gifting it? Yes. The, qu the question that, that the God's Way of Love directors need to assess 
is whether there's a feeling from the owners that they do actually have a benefit to the world going on or if they got some personal things happening. The learning centres are going to be locations that benefit the world, not specifically benefits the owner. And the owners need to give that consideration before they make the agreement. Does that make sense? So the owner may not be able to live on their own land under the learning centre agreement, whereas the owner of the other agreement would certainly be able to do anything they wanted. The difference is going to be that the owner of a learning centre is going to be committed to the benefit to the world rather than the benefit to themselves. Do you see the difference? And they're going to have to demonstrate that, that commitment. Yeah. Yeah. And I also see why you were saying that this would take a higher priority yep. to the previous category. Yep. So as a landowner that I was living on my land, um, why would God's way of love want to put resources into that as a gift? We would be, if the, an owner might live on the land and still want to make a learning centre, and we'd oh, yeah. be perfectly happy to accommodate that yeah. if the land then became of benefit to the world rather than benefit to the owner. Mm. But we'd have to assess the owner's personal commitment to that process, wouldn't we? So in the discussions, you find that what happens sometimes is you feel, oh, they want to live there and then they want this and they want that. And, and after a while, the list of wants get fairly long, right? And you go, yeah, there's not... There's not a consideration of what benefit to the world here. There's more of a consideration of benefit to yourself. We're happy to enter a relationship with you as an owner agreement, but we're not happy to enter a learning centre agreement with you. Does that make sense? Because we see these particular emotional injuries are still in play with you and we can't engage those particular emotional injuries in the learning centre. They have to... so, so the reality is the owner might be asked to leave their own property <laughs> and be willing to do so if they weren't in harmony with God's way of love. Mm. Now, the owner who's fully committed to a benefit of the world would do that. They still own the property, but they'd be, they'd be willing to do that. An owner who's not fully committed to the benefit of the world would not be willing to do that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so, for example, in my property, if I made a commitment, as a, if I wanted a learning centre to be in my property, and I made a commitment with God's way of love organisation that it would become a learning centre, then if the God's Way of Love organisation determined through... And, and obviously there'd be a process of talking to me and talking to me about my condition of love and so forth, but if they determined that actually the condition of love of myself was worse than my own property and that it'd be better for me to live off of it for a while until my condition of love improved, then if I wanted something to benefit the world, I'd probably be willing to do that. But if I, didn't, if I wanted something to benefit myself, I wouldn't be willing to do that. And then the agreement would be just become an owner agreement and not a learning centre agreement because that's an owner agreement. An owner agreement, he's allowed to have personal benefit. He's allowed to do what he wants on his own property. With the learning centre agreement, it's a bit different. What we're doing is we're committing, the owners, the owners or the group of owners are committing to God's way of love, not the organisation. I mean actual the principles of God's way of love and a benefit to the world. They're actually making a personal commitment to that which is a very different step, which takes a lot more courage than, than the original agreement would take. The original agreement basically takes no courage at all. You just say, yes, I'd like some assistance, thank you very much. Um, and, and all it is is just this thing that happens, a to and fro, oh, here's some information, no worries, I'll take with that and do with that what I want. And if what I want happens to be in harmony with love, then God's way of love will continue the arrangement. The Learning Centre agreement is very different. Because the learning centre agreement is the owner is basically saying, or the group of owners is basically saying, we are committed to making this pro property of benefit to the world. And we are committed to following the advice given by God's way of love organisation to do that. Even if that means we ourselves are out of harmony with the love that we say we want to, to actually engage. Now I put to you, that if a person was really sincere about practising divine truth principles and God's way of love principles, they would not have any um, delay in wanting to improve their own soul condition, ever. And I put to you that a person who is sincerely feeling along those lines, it would be highly unlikely they'd ever be removed from their own property if they really sincerely desired to do that. Does that make sense? But it may happen. 
and the, and and they need to acknowledge. We need to acknowledge before it begins that it might happen. Now they retain the ownership of the property. They are still able to sell the property if that's what they wish to do. But if they wish to sell it, then all of the projects that have been done on the property that can be moved would need to be moved so that we can move them to another property that's of benefit to the world. Does that make sense? But we actually see this kind of agreement as being a very long-term uh, agreement uh, and very close sort of agreement anyway, where the owners are really committed to the principles of divine truth and practicing divine love in their life. And, and I feel quite strongly that I don't want to enter into any agreements with any owner that create to create a learning center unless I see those particular things inside of them. Yeah. 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 Any other questions about this? Right up the back, thanks. Um, the mic will take a little time. And please bear in mind that this benefit to the world doesn't just apply to a learning centre, it applies to learning projects. It applies to projects that we all learn from but also have a benefit to the world. Those projects will take priority over other projects. Uh, I'm not 100% clear, but basically if you're in your passion on your property and, say, creating like something beautiful there... And you want it as a learning centre um, to benefit the world, but to start with, you're happy doing most of the work. Is that okay? Or well, there's a difference between the learning centre and a, the owner's personal property. Like in a way, if you're an owner who owns a property, it might be let's say it's a f hundred acre property of your own that you own. Now that doesn't specifically loan, lend itself towards being a learning centre anyway. Like, it's usually the properties that are, that are much larger that lend themselves towards this kind of thing. So, so I would suggest that that's just an owner-based property who wants to practice divine love and put those things into action. My suggestion is the majority of you probably want to do that anyway, mm. right? So, so you don't really need an agreement with the God's Way of Love organisation to do it. You just, might, you, you just might want a bit of extra attention or a bit of you know, somebody to walk around the property and give you some advice and so forth. And all you need to do is phone or ask and, and hopefully we'll be able to arrange something. But not at the expense of setting up a different type of property, which is the learning centre type of property. Because the learning centre type of property is a benefit to the world, the owners need to allow God's way of love to manage the property. Do you understand the difference? In the other way, the owner still managed the property. He, he, the owner was still doing things based on the advice that he or she decides to take or not take. Right? In this particular arrangement, in a learning centre arrangement, the owner won't have a choice about taking the advice. When I say they won't have a choice, if they decide to not take the advice, the agreement is terminated. Do you understand the difference? So in the first case, the owner can decide to not take the advice or take the advice and the agreement may remain in place depending on what goes on. However, in the benefit to the world projects, if the owners do not take the advice, then the project is terminated. For obvious reasons, mm. if you think about it. If, they, if they're not going to do what God's Way of Love organisation suggests for them to do, then why have they got the agreement in the first place? Right? They're obviously not committed to doing that. The constitution of the organisation is very clear and any person committed to entering into a benefit to the world project needs to understand the terms of the constitution. And the constitution states very carefully that we want to give everything to the world for free. Right? And we want to practice the principles of divine truth and divine love in every aspect of, the lo of our life. And that in a learning centre means in every aspect of the learning centre. So the owner doesn't really have a choice in the sense that do I decide to follow that advice or not? The owner just has the choice, do I decide to make my property a learning centre or not? And they're allowed to terminate the agreement at any time 
and no longer make it a learning centre. And by the way, God's way of love can terminate the agreement at any time and say that property is no longer a learning centre. Why would we want to do that? Well, what might happen is we might give the owners a certain set of devices, this is what we want to do on the property, and the owner says, no, I'm sorry, I don't want that happening on the property, but I, I'm happy for other things to happen on the property. And we go, well, no, here's the, here's the loving things, like we list all the loving things, and the owner still goes, well, no, I don't agree, I don't, I don't want to do that on the property. Well, God's way of love might then decide, well, this is no longer a working arrangement anymore, and so we would terminate the agreement which would mean that every project on that property that can be moved will be moved. Any project on the property that can't be moved will remain. So if we've planted a thousand trees, fruit trees on the property, we would leave them there. We wouldn't cut them down or move them. Does that make sense? But, if, and even if we've paid for them, we would not move them. And we would not even ask the owner to give us payment for them. Do you understand? Because we'd treat that as a gift. However, we would request that any movable project on the property that's of benefit to the world is actually moved to a property that we can use as a learning centre or use as benefit to the world still. Yeah. And that way, although some of our work might be lost, not all of it will be lost. Mm. Do you understand the difference? AJ, have um, what you've been telling us so far, has, have you uh, taken it a step further or are you telling us first before you approach the tax department or the government, you know what I mean, as, for, as to the changes that have to be made? Um, there's no changes that have to be made to the Constitution at this point that prevent us from doing what I'm explaining to you. However, I am going to incorporate the two types of agreements, one defining of benefit to the world and the other defining of benefit to the individual in the Constitution so that it is clear in the Constitution that, that the projects or the particular, uh, pro yeah, the particular projects that are of benefit to the world will have God's way of love priority. Um, so I am going to add that to the Constitution. But the Constitution, as it is right now, does not stop us from doing any of these things anyway. Does that make sense? So we can just go ahead now uh, as it is. Yep. We don't need to worry. All we need to be concerned about, and all I need to be concerned about from an accounting perspective, is that I need to account for any income that comes into the property, uh, into God's way of love, sorry, and expenses that go out. Now, remember that that I don't have to account for anything that happens on the owner's property because they have to. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. And this is a beautiful thing for me because it means I don't have to do a heap of accounting. <laughs> <laughs> the person who's the owners need to worry about that, not me. Right? It also means that we're not, in, we're not into the process of managing or paying the bills of the property. The owner is still responsible for that. Right? So in other words, the God's Way of Love organisation, in a learning centre arrangement, the God's Way of Love organisation will not be responsible for any payment of bills on the property. The owners are still responsible for that. They are responsible for all payments on the property. Now, if a person creates a learning centre, there is a higher likelihood, and they have a full commitment to that, there is a higher likelihood that they will receive donations towards that learning centre that it will benefit humanity than there would be if they did things on their own without it being a learning centre. Is that not the case? If you knew that a person was committed to making a learning centre rather, or benefiting the world rather than just benefiting themselves, you would be far more like, generous generally with your time and, and, and your resources than you would be with a person that you know is just being self-serving. So it'll soon work out whether the person's being self-serving or not, you know, as to what happens. We feel the uh, learning centre arrangement, the beauty of the learning centre arrangement too, is that it requires a lot of trust. It requires a lot of trust on the behalf of the people who are volunteering because they're spending time, their time and effort, on something that they don't own. Right? It requires a lot of trust uh, in terms of God's way of love in the sense that we're giving monetarily of funds that have been donated 
two owners that may eventually say, I don't want to do this anymore. Right? But it also requires a lot of trust of the owner because he's got to trust that what we're doing on his property is going to be okay. And obviously we want to make sure that everything that's done on the property is in harmony with the laws of the land or that particular country. So that is one part of the agreement, that, that everything that God's way of love does on the land receives approval before it occurs. Does that make sense? So that way we protect the owner against anything that might occur with regard to being attacked by some other government institution and so forth. Is there any other questions about this arrangement? Yep. So AJ, would there be a minimum acreage size for any property being set up as a learning centre? Well, obviously we would definitely prefer it to be larger acreage than smaller acreage, certainly. So, so for instance, if I've got a 40 acre property, it's pretty hard to turn it into a learning centre where maybe hundreds and maybe even thousands of people may visit regularly when I've got such limited space. Does that make sense? Whereas if I had a property that's say five, six hundred thousand acres, now you know, I, can, uh, I can handle thousands of people coming onto the property relatively easily in comparison. And so some properties are going to lend themselves more to being a learning centre than others, I, for sure. And, uh, and so my, my feelings on the matter is that we want to make sure... And by the way, we've been offered many properties, <laughs> none of which we've accepted at this point. Um, and when I say we've been offered many properties, many people on the coast have offered their property. And I'm going, I'm sorry, but I don't see any long-term benefit of helping, <laughs> of having that property, you know, like... You know, I'm sorry, and they're going, well, why not, why not? And I say, well, like, the feeling I have is that property is not going to probably exist in a few years' time, or if it does, it's going to be severely damaged, and I don't want our work to be severely damaged. I want it to have some longevity. So, so yeah, there are going to be, uh, it's going to be an individual decision, basically, of the board as to um, what, you know, what properties are accepted as learning centres, certainly. Some properties will lend themselves more towards it, other properties less so. So, you know, there might be even properties that are offered that are like, um, for example, I see in the future properties offered that are basically nature properties and there's nothing on them. And we may, we may accept it as a learning centre property um, and have the same arrangement, but, but we wouldn't have people on it. Right? We may maintain it as a pristine property. Yeah. So... Okay. Oh yeah, it's two hours already. Is there any other questions um, that you'd like to ask about it? Uh, what I'd like to do is just sort out most of your general questions before we have a break. Then we have a break and then we'll answer your specific questions about specific properties. Um, if you were a learning centre and you required to buy, say, some equipment and you donated half the money to buy it and the learning centre the other, mm -hmm. or I mean the God's way of love, if it then became no longer a learning centre and you were taking the project over, what would happen? How would you do this? One of the management issues of the learning centre is we would like the owners to maintain a register of who has donated property, uh, who has donated equipment to the property. And if that equi equipment is movable, we would like them to actually make an agreement that they give back to the person who donated it, the equipment, if they decide it's no longer a learning centre. Or they donate it to another learning centre. Does that make sense? See, most people are donating to the learning centre because it's a learning centre, not for any other purpose. Now, if the person decides to not have it as a learning centre anymore, then it, then it would be a loving thing to all of those people who have donated because it's a learning centre, for their resource to be used on another learning centre, or if that's not possible, to be given back to them so that they can use it. Uh, what I meant was that if the owner of the learning centre mm -hmm. donates maybe half of it, because he well, didn't have Then he's entitled to half. Oh. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. This is where a record needs to be kept of what 
has happened. So he'd be paid out if he bought a equipment or something? Or? Well, either one would be paid out or the other. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or some kind of arrangement made where we say, oh, well, we don't really want that particular equipment, you can have it or whatever. But an arrangement would have to be made, certainly. Okay. Yep. And that's a part of the agreement that the owners are making about the centre is they're making an agreement to keep a register of all of the donations that are, that are given to them of equipment and so forth so that when, when the, the whole thing's added up at the end of the day that, uh, and if they decide to disband the agreement or God's way of love decides to disband the agreement that the owners have some way of giving back to the people who have donated to them. Now there's going to be immense benefits to those owners either way because there's a lot of work that will be done on their property by volunteer effort. So there's, a, there's an immense benefit to the owners. It's just an issue of trust. You see, the owner can only maintain a learning centre agreement while they allow God's way of love to manage, when I say manage, to determine what happens on the property. So we're not going to manage the property, we're going to determine what happens, what's allowed to happen on the property. Does that make sense? Which is very different. They still have day-to-day -day management of the property, and do all the things they need to do on the property, pay the bills, so forth. But the God's Way of Love organisation will determine what happens on the property, not the owner. And if the owner disagrees with that, we automatically have, a, have an abandonment of the agreement, which means we can no longer use that particular location as a learning centre. Yep. Raj? Um, just going back to the... Uh issue regarding land being made available for, let's say, call it nature reserves or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, if, let's say, a large landowner wanted to forego a piece of land that he didn't want, um, he's not able, he can donate that to the organisation? He doesn't need to. He can still maintain ownership of the land. Right. He can enter mm -hmm. a learning centre agreement with us for the land. And what we would do is we would then determine what happens on that land. If we determine that nothing should happen on the land, or that we should put some more plants into the land and so forth and get mm. some rejuvenation projects happening, and we do all of that, as long as he is committed to benefit to the world where people can come and look at that land, maybe spend a bit of time in it and so forth, then we see no reason why, even though there's nothing on it, like in terms of buildings or mm -hmm. property, uh, other than the land itself, uh, we see no reason why we couldn't have that as a learning centre. But he would still be liable to the financial costs of yes. owning the land. Yes. So there isn't an ish, an opportunity within the organisation to accept responsibility for very large tracts of land. To we we don't have the funds to do that. No. Uh, also, we don't want to manage land. Right. He, the alternative, of course, is the alternative I outlined right at the beginning, which was that he donates the land to us, but pay gives us enough money to pay the stamp duty so that we right. can accept the donation. Because at the moment we have no way of accepting the donation uh, because of the amount of stamp duty right. that we've But then we'd required. still have the ongoing annual maintenance, uh, management and um, financial Yes, costs. under those circumstances we would consider the acceptance of the property, okay. but we would have to consider as a part of the God's Way of Love organisation whether we have enough funds coming in to okay. pay for its yeah. continuous right. charges. So it would have land tax available on it, it would have it would have rates and taxes on it, and we would need to consider, do we want to buy it off that particular, those particular charges? Mm. Now, now, there might be compelling reasons to do that. You know, it could be a large tract of land, a few thousand acres, that is almost pristine bush that we feel that we could protect continuously, and that we may decide that that's the best way to handle that particular issue. But that, that'll be issue-by-issue issue basis. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? AJ, all that you're saying at the moment is according to how life is at the moment because yep. I believe that when these changes happen then there's going to be a lot of changes too as to governments and... There will the be no changes in operation from our perspective. So from our perspective an owner can still enter the same agreement. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah. No, none that's, of those I, things no, change. No, no, no. I'm talking about the way that life is at the moment financially will change. I agree. You know, so and there might be more compelling reasons later for somebody to enter into a learning centre yeah. agreement than there are with them now. Yeah. But, but from our perspective, nothing changes. Yeah. We've tried to design the whole operation in such a manner that we're, we're not, to be frank, myself and Mary are not very concerned about so-called earth changes. Yeah. 
we are, we are concerned about the reasons why we came here and that is primarily to teach divine truth and divine love on the planet and that is not going to change no matter what happens on the earth and, and, uh, and so what we want to do is set up an organisation that even if there's no paperwork anymore and there's no taxation requirements anymore the organisation still functions in exactly the same manner as it always has functioned yeah. Yeah. and that's, the, that's why we've set up God's way of love we want to set it up in such a manner that it, we have a defined guideline, piece of paper guideline, which is what we now call the Constitution, but that is just a defined guideline of love and how love is going to be applied in that particular organisation. Whether the paperwork for the organisation exists in the future or not, yeah. those guidelines will remain. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. It's yep. just coming from the standpoint of us asking questions about uh, whether we have to pay this or the owner has to pay the rate so that this... I agree. Uh, that that's, could happen, it might not happen. Exactly. But, but this is p concrete. Yes. The organisation is concrete, but it's... And this is also one reason why we want to leave those things in the hand of the owner. Because, yeah. it, you know, in the future the owner might not have rates and taxes to pay and might not have any other things but we still respect them as the caretaker of the property yeah. that 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 is their you know that is their role they've been on that property they've obviously have a a soul based attraction to that property to be there in the first place and we want to respect that um we don't want to take things away from people we want to add to their life this is why we're going to be focused on giving gifts not yeah. receiving things yeah and this is why also I don't see any point in the God's Way of Love organisation receiving property or land in particular um, unless there is some particular greater benefit to the world in doing so. So if somebody comes along and says, oh, there's a, there's a nearly extinct bird and some animals on this particular property and we're willing to give you that property, I'll be jumping at it. Does that make sense? Like, but if somebody says to me, oh, I've got this property, it's like 500 acres down, down the road there and it's completely barren and we want to give it to you, now I might go, yeah, that's a good opportunity to turn a completely barren property into like a pristine property. So I might go, yeah, that's very tempting, you see, to do that. And, and if his only proviso is you've got to pay the ongoing rates and taxes, I might go, yeah, I might consider that. Right? So the directors might sit down and go, yeah, we see some benefit here. We could get a very damaged property and turn it into a pristine property and document the whole process. That could be very interesting. Right? So, so I might accept that. So it just depends on what the particular underlying purpose would be for accepting a particular property. Yep. Yeah, Mary, you want to... I just wanted to add that um, talking a lot about ownership and your point was about, you know, after changes and things, obviously our current financial system wouldn't remain the same. But I, f I feel, and we feel, that God's way of love isn't the owner of any land anyway. Mm. We are just caretakers of God's land. So that's why there's not a big emphasis in us on ownership even now or after mm. changes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we, we, we feel quite strongly that um, what, what I'm calling now the owner, in the future we'll probably start using, like, the feeling will be coming from us, I'm the caretaker of, you know, of this land, not the owner. And if you think about it from, a, from, from ancient societies and civilizations, many some of which are are still current, you know, like the, the Indians or the Aboriginals or other kinds of societies, they had that viewpoint that they were the caretaker, not the owner. Because they realised that each of us live a finite life and so therefore we can't say that we own something permanently, yes? And uh, this is something that all of us need to come to terms with. But I'm using the term owner at the moment because they are the legal title holder of the said land, business, institution, whatever. Yep. Any other questions about that? Um, the, the word projects under learning centres, mm -hmm. you've said that there's um, just as validly can apply to that. W would you feel to fill that out a little? Sure. Um, the learning centre itself is a project. 
It's not, we don't see the learning centre as a land or a property. We see it as a project. And, and there are many other projects. So there might be a project for sustainable energy, a project for sustainable ecosystems, a project that looks after waste management, a, project that looks a, a project that looks after toxic waste, a project that looks after radiation and, and other types of things, a project that looks after human sickness and health, a project that looks after education, a project that looks at... So, like I'm saying, I could list... We could list all areas of life here. They become a project that we run on the learning centre, right? And the learning centre itself is a project. And the learning centre, the difference between the projects that we do with owners compared to the projects that we do that are, that are like this is the project with an owner by themselves is not of benefit to the world, but primarily of benefit to the owner. Whereas, and, and of course it's a benefit to the volunteers because we get to have experiences and so forth that help us, but with regard to a learning centre or other projects that have the definition, and this is what I'm focusing on here, the definition is benefit to the world, uh, not just to an individual or a group of individuals, but rather to the entire of society if we engage this project, then anything that comes under that banner has a different type of nature to it. And the different type of nature is that the owner must accede to the wishes of the God's Way of Love organisation to manage the project. Right? They may contribute to the project, but they must accede to the directions given by the God's Way of Love organisation about the project. And if they refuse to, then the agreement severs and the project becomes the property of the God's Way of Love organisation so that we can continue the project, whatever that is. Now, on a learning centre, some of the projects we can't move and some of the projects we can. So the projects that can be moved, we would just move to another learning centre if we had that particular land available. If not, then we may just say to the guy or whoever owns the... I'm sorry, we can't move it, we don't have the means, so it's going to have to remain... Catch you later. And a person can stop being a learning centre and still maintain an agreement with us. We're not going to go naughty, naughty, naughty. You know, you naughty person for not being able to maintain that original agreement. We're going to, they might say, oh, you know, I've tried this learning centre thing and it's far too confronting for me at the moment. You know, I just can't handle it. So I'd prefer just to be an owner at the moment. Does that make sense? And if they prefer that, then we're perfectly okay with that. But, but it would not maintain our priority. You see the difference? Because it's the benefit to the world that would maintain the priority of the God's Way of Love organisation. Yep. Could it happen that someone in, say, a smaller property... Yep. Um, were to develop a project that might be a service-oriented project, not a um, um, material project. Certainly. Which they then would feel they wanted to benefit the world, be it innovatory yes. with regard to inventions, hardcore, or yep. personal um, relationships or healing, that yep. sort of thing. Certainly. And then that person would have a huge desire to benefit that to the world so that the records team could come and everyone could develop that, but it may not be physically on the learning centre because it evolved on a property. Or could you, can you see where my confusion is there? Yes, certainly. If, if we can, we would move it to a learning centre because it's going to be a lot easier to manage on a learning centre than it's going to be on an individual person's property. And it will also mean that people can come and look at it more readily and see what's going on more readily, if that was possible. If that was not possible, then we'd certainly maintain a project agreement with the person. So in other words, we, we, one of the things that I haven't yet raised with you is an agreement of doing something with an owner as a project that will benefit the world. Mm. So in other words, we're not on their property doing it. It's something that somebody comes along and says, like somebody might come along and says, I want to help with making some kind of uh, like renewable energy or something like that. And we go, great, that sounds really, really good. And he says, and he says to us, on my property, I've already got this happening, that happening, this happening, that happening. All right, we'll make your property the centre of the project. But the requirement is 
that the project itself is owned by God's Way of Love organisation and that the God's Way of Love organisation will make the results of the project uh, free to the world. Does that make sense? Now, if the owner agrees with that, we'd be happy to enter that kind of an agreement. Yep. Gary? If you've got a, um, a learning centre and there's an owner there and he becomes, at some stage, um, selfish or doesn't like a lot of people hanging around, he's got some emotion against that, yeah. can you just say to him, well, you're going to have to remove yourself from the property until you deal with that emotion? Sure. And if he says, I'm not, then I say, your agreement's terminated. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it could be done like that, like... Certainly. And leave the whole learning centre there. Yes, and then when he's, when he's dealt with that emotion, come back. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yep. But, but I'm not going to compromise, and the, the directors of the organisation are not going to compromise issues of love and truth to suit an owner's personal whims. Does that make sense? So any owner who contemplates a learning centre agreement, or really it's not a learning centre agreement, remember... I'm referring to it as a learning centre, but it's an agreement to benefit the world. Any owner who enters an agreement to benefit the world on any project, including a learning centre, needs to understand that if they are in the way of actually benefiting the world, then we'll be addressing that emotionally with them and the agreement will either terminate or continue depending upon their actions and their, and their response. Yep. So they're going to find pretty firm on those issues. So this is where it's going to be quite confronting for any owner who enters that kind of an agreement. Yeah. Property, oh, a property out west, uh, say 420 acres, yep. no house, in good condition, beautiful land, but if the people or the people now owning it... Um, say in their 70s and uh, you know when you get to that age you probably won't be keeping it too much longer. Yeah. Um, is there any hope of, of using it as a learning centre or anything to benefit the world in something like that? Certainly. We've, we're interested in any property, in any location, even if it's in the middle of a desert. <laughs> right? Um, and the, the owners may consider, if they're aged owners, they may consider something like entering an ownership agreement with us but also putting in the will that if they pass that they'll pass you know they'll bequeath the property to the god's way of love organization or something like that we'd be happy to accept that arrangement and um, the the beauty of that is that they don't have any charges or anything you know and we don't have any charges to pay but we can begin beautifying or or, or utilizing that property to benefit the world and and it has a long-term benefit so that comes to me under the under the condition of a project to benefit the world and uh, perfectly happy to accept those kind of projects. In fact, we'd welcome them open, uh, with open arms. And even if it meant nobody could live on there, we are very happy with these kind of projects because um, they have a lot of benefits in the sense of environmentally that we can, we can start to actually demonstrate to the world. Um, so, yeah, very enthusiastic about those kind of properties. Yeah. Actually, this is out in an area which is uh, completely booming now. Yeah. And that's in the Chinchilla area. Yeah. And uh, it's not far removed from where that town is. Yeah. And um, I can inquire and see what I... Yeah, what yeah. comes available. We're, and uh, the owners still own the property... So that's the thing, they retain ownership. And what they do with the property is, is theirs, like at the, end, at the end. If they want it as a learning centre, then they need to accede to what advice the God's Way of Love organisation gives them regarding the property. And on properties like that, it's it, without, that do not have any you know, buildings on them or many buildings on them, um, it's highly unlikely we would have people living on them. But, but we would want to work on them as sort of nature sanctuaries to provide, you know, to provide illustrations of how we can do certain things to him, to to uh, fix up the problem of our rapidly diminishing species on the planet, and uh, those kind of properties will have lots of role. I feel in demonstrating the truth of things to people 
in terms of what we can do. So yeah, I'm very, we're very enthusiastic about all those kind of properties. The key is going to be the attitudes of the owners. That's going to be the key. If the attitude of the owner is, I'm going to do what you say as long as it's what I like, then that's an owner agreement. That's not going to ever be a learning centre. A learning centre is going to have to exceed to the directions, not the management, but the directions of the God's Way of Love organisation, completely. In other words, in every single thing. And that is what some owners are going to find very, very difficult. Does that make sense? So my suggestion is, if you think considering a learning centre agreement, think about it carefully. Consider it carefully. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? Is everyone starting to understand how it all will work? Now, um, yeah, if we have my key. My, my feeling and Mary's feeling is that any person who desires to have a project of benefit to the world, you are going to find people coming out of the woodwork to help you, frankly. Like, that's what will happen. Whenever you have within yourself a pure desire to do something that's in harmony with love, you just attract all the right people and they all, they all just come to help. If, if any of your desires become impure in the process, you'll find that'll start pushing people away. Right? And that's the, that's the beauty of doing a learning centre. If myself and Mary had a property large enough, we'd already be doing a learning centre um, because, because we feel that it is a beautiful way to actually share with a large group of people and also have, do projects on the property that benefit the world and, and to learn a lot in the process, but also to, um, to, to deal with the emotional reasons of, you know, that we want to retain ownership. Right? So, yeah, this, uh, this whole idea of a learning centre, we're still very enthusiastic about but it's, it's changed in, in that God's way of love does not own the property. And we need to understand whatever we do on that property, there is a risk that it might be lost. And that was what's going to challenge us emotionally. Uh, why would I go along to something that might be lost? Well, because you love it. <laughs> is a good reason to me, right? Is there any other? Is this, yep. If we mic down here. Where is the mic at the moment? If you just keep your hand up so that, so the guys know. What was your name again? Hi, AG. What was your name? Amaya. Amaya. Um, well, I understand if someone wants to start a learning center mm -hmm. and he has no special project, he has just a big land. Mm -hmm. And an, a loving intention, yeah. How will God's way of love organization decide which projects will happen? Obviously, environmental projects, well, it's quite clear. Um, but what other project and who and how it will be decided? What's that going will all on happen sort of very. Um it depends on the law of attraction of what we attract is probably the best way to say that. So, so for a start, the learning centre itself is a project in itself. So we see the learning centres not as attractive land, but actually as a project on their own right. And, and what we would do then is that that project, the learning centre, may have other projects happening on it. So, you know, there might be projects for energy, there might be projects for mass science, there might be projects for health medical investigation and all the, all the other th kinds of projects. And the, basically the way that God's way of love w will work is that we want to do every project possible. <laughs> However, there'll be some kind of limited resources. So what we're going to be doing is on the website, we'll be posting up what we need to get a certain project done. So, you know, if we, we might decide to do a seed bank project and what we need is these particular things. And we'll just put that on the website and just allow the law of attraction to work as to who notices that and who wants to be a part of it and what resources come along as a result. Does that make sense? 
So it, it is based on the desire of the people um, that want to volunteer in project? Yes, yeah, very much so. In fact, a lot of our projects up to this point have only begun through the desire of one person. And then all of a sudden that one person's desire, we've just engaged that one person's desire and then it's been two people and then it's been three people and then before you know it, it's a group of people. Yep. And that's how we want every project to come about because we want the people on the projects to have the desire, you know, the passionate desire to do it. Yeah. Thank you. That's the idea. Yep. Is that all for us? We're hungry now? Yeah. Right. Well, what we'll do after the break is we'll talk, talk more specifically about the individual properties that you may have heard about or already know about. Now, I cannot say categorically about some of these particular uh, projects or, or learning centres because, because some of the owners are still in the process of determining what they want. But, but, and I don't want to um, force them or force their decision to be a certain way. However, what I would like to do is just overview with you what's been happening on, in specific areas and what we envisage might happen in specific areas and that will give you an idea at least of what, what will, will happen in the future. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep, so let's do that after the break.